Death and resurrection can be crucial to any D&D campaign. Death for players can be this hard stop on their character's story. It can be this necessary fear and understanding that things can end. Whereas resurrection can be an adventure unto itself. Death and coming back from death happen quite a bit uh, in Dungeons & Dragons campaigns. Some, in some campaigns, the ability to bring uh, people back from the dead is heavily curtailed by the Dungeon Master, and that is totally in a DM's purview to do so. In other D&D campaigns, death is kind of a, a minor inconvenience, some magic is used, and the adventures are brought back and are right back into the action. That's also fine. We've designed the game so that depending on a group's taste and the style of fantasy that is being used in a campaign, that either of those approaches and something in between would all be fine. But it still brings up the question, what does it mean to die in the D&D multiverse? What does it mean to be brought back? Uh, and what are our ideas behind the spells that let you do these things? Now, the idea in D&D is that a typical person, when they die, uh, it's similar to when we die here, but just as the gods are known to, act, to be a real thing in the D&D multiverse, we also know in the D&D multiverse that the souls of the dead go places. Uh, and depending on a person's alignment, their allegiance to a particular god or family of gods, their soul might wander off to one of the... Uh, paradise-like upper plains. It might be consigned to some uh, horrific existence in one of the lower plains. It might become a spirit in the Feywild or a nature spirit in the material plane, or the dead might go on to be a wandering husk in the Shadowfell. It all depends on uh, the particular soul, and it depends also on the DM's world building. Uh, but it can be a lot of fun, particularly as a DM who likes to build a world and cultivate a cosmic story, to consider where do these souls go when they die. And it's not just a kind of academic question to ask, because when you have a player character who dies, it can be a really good thing to know well, what's next. Now, in some cases, even if the DM knows what's next, it's fair to keep it as a mystery in a particular campaign. The person dies... The curtain falls, and we don't know what is beyond the veil. Uh, but it becomes trickier if, what if you bring that person back from the, the dead? Do they remember what they saw when they died? Where were they for that amount of time? Uh, it might be a little bit amount of time if, if you use a spell like Revivify, which basically just snatches a person out of the jaws of death. But what if it's a much higher level uh, spell, such as resurrection or true resurrection, where you could have had somebody who was dead for quite some time suddenly brought back. What did they experience? Where were they? Were they on the slopes of Mount Celestia? Were they being tormented in the Nine Hells? Interesting questions. That can really shape uh, how that character is role-played thereafter. If you plucked them back from the the joyful paradise of Elysium. Are they actually glad to be back? You know, this is, this is a really important question to consider in certain types of campaigns that are really about uh, world building and uh, characterization is if you were in paradise, are you, are you actually pleased to be back in a dungeon fighting monsters? No, in D&D, resurrection magic requires the willingness of the person to come back. So unless you're doing some dark wish or using some ancient artifact-like power to bring somebody back against their will, if they come back, they have done so willingly. Uh, and so if they've left some paradise, they must have had a good reason for coming back. Uh, and often it will be because they love their adventuring companions or they have some great deed left undone uh, or in the case of maybe some rascally character, they just want to come back because it's just the material world is fun. Um, they're getting a little bored of endless happiness. <laughs> they want some of the, the scruffiness of material life. 
so they've come back to, you know, to delve into one more dungeon, to have one more mighty quest. Uh, and so there are a lot, you can imagine a lot of motivations for why a soul would come back. Now, if the soul is being tormented, they are delighted to come back. I have sometimes found as a DM, going back to going through that door, whether you're going through it to die or coming back through it to come back from the dead, uh, that journey uh, can spawn whole adventures. Uh, and sometimes some of the most moving scenes in a campaign. In my current campaign, one of the most striking moments for my group uh, occurred when a character died and I described to the player what the character, what she was experiencing after she died. But I did it in front of the whole group because I was using that scene actually to help tell broader story for not only the campaign but for the setting. And there was a real sense of wonder at the table as I basically allowed my players to see through the veil uh, for just a moment. Um, because I, the way I often handle it as a DM is that there's kind of a, a way station when you die and you're met by somebody. And depending on the world I'm DMing in, it, it changes who you're met by. It also depends on uh, your character's uh, species. It depends on what you've done, what your alignment is. So that person who meets you in that way station, how they appear will be different. Um, and then I have this idea that then the soul goes someplace else. And you never get to see that as a player. Uh, that there's usually a doorway they go through. But I will often let my players see this brief glimpse of what they experience right after they die and right before they go through the door to their final destination. Um, and again, DMs can use that uh, to sometimes blow their players' minds, to seed new stories. Uh, and then again, when the, when the character is coming from the other direction, coming back through the door into the world, uh, I think it's great when, when DMs and players consider this question of what did they see? How much of it do they remember? And what does it do to their personality to recall uh, the darkness they might have seen in the abyss or one of the other lower planes? How does it lift their spirits or fill them with melancholy if they can remember joys on the upper planes that no joy in the material plane can match? I mean, that, that would have a lingering effect on a character and could change them uh, for the rest of their career. Uh, both brightening the character, but also it could, it could turn into sort of a melancholy, not unlike the melancholy that most elves end up feeling in their lives uh, as, as essentially the, the descendants of a god. Most elves eventually start having this sense of melancholy because some part of them remembers being uh, in a place more splendid than anything they've ever experienced in, in the mortal realm. Uh, and, and some part of them even remembers that they themselves were essentially godlike. And again, that starts leading to a melancholy. And, and so you again can start thinking, what does that do to my character? Uh, and then DMs can also think about NPCs who've come back from the dead. What does it do to them? Is this villain or this heroic NPC, is their villainy or their heroism actually influenced by what they experienced when they were dead and they came back? Now, a lot of this, these questions, uh, of course, can be avoided by just, you don't remember, and that's also fine. Uh, it is perfectly fine for death in a campaign, and I think often this actually is the default, for death to be just a complete mystery, and that when a person comes back from the dead, it's almost like waking from a nap uh, that had no dreams. And the person, they don't remember. You could also think of it as a very dreamful sleep. And so the DM could feed the risen character with occasional visions that may or may not be accurate reflections of what happened beyond the grave. And then again, the other extreme is, no, you remember. Uh, and it's that, if you go that route, that's when you can have strong effect on your campaign storytelling. A big thank you to Jeremy Crawford for talking to us about death and resurrection in the D&D multiverse. I'm Todd Kenrick. Thank you for watching.